it's it's you have to i mean it's it's almost a it is a full-time job when we come home and we do it um we do it in our off time and um, we're talking every day i mean we were up today at nine o'clock practicing we practiced for four or five hours six hours we were together and then you know we'll, we'll continue throughout the week discussing stuff we're not on our instruments it's it's social you know media marketing discussing right. next shows what we're doing three months down the road four or five six months down the road um and everybody's got to have a little hand in that otherwise it will it'll get too much i mean it, you'll get overwhelmed yeah, it becomes too yeah. much, and there's bands that don't that don't run it like a business, and that's fine. But there's people out there that say, "Oh, a band's you know, it's not a business." It, it technically it is. I mean, it is a, every band that is investing money in recording and merchandise, whether it's a hobby or not. If you create yourself an LLC, you guys can be all be partners and write that shit off on your taxes every dime you spend and every. Every time you put gas in for a show, it's a, it's a business expense. We ran our band as a business. Um, the guitar player handled pretty much all of that stuff because he was the one laying out all the money at the time. But to me, it's it's always been a business. Now, it's more of I just want to write music and have a good time. If something happens, it happens. If it don't, I don't care. I have ways of releasing my music and, and um, I have different distribution levels and companies that I deal with and friends that own record labels. I have a little record label myself, which guys probably know I put the comp CDs out and shit. Um, you know, so it's just really basically who you know. I mean, now I wish when I was in a band back in the day that I had someone I could go to. Now from being in radio and being on Sirius for a couple of years back in the day and doing FM radio, I know more people in the record industry now than I did. If only it was switched around, things would have been a lot different in my life as far as music, but it's, it's one of the hardest businesses to be in. For sure. Well, it's a good time to, as, as do it yourself musicians, man, there hasn't been a better time. I mean, we have so many tools available to us. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. And, and I mean, it, yeah, some bands, I mean, yeah, they, you got to manifest your destiny a little bit. Um, we know mm -hmm. we can't control everything, but we're damn well going to put 150% effort into it and and make what we, and we align our goals. We don't set any unrealistic expectations. That way we're working together and we're not against each other. Um, but we definitely strive for moving forward and we just we set small goals ahead and we, we, we knock those out and we set up another one. We knock it down and we keep going. But that's um, it. Just... We're not to the point where we. We want to set up a business yet, but we do operate very business-like. We all are, are well-organized, and our communication is, is great. But it's a great time for to be an indie musician, man. I mean, it's the best than it ever has been, I think. Yeah, it's, it's definitely easier. It's just, you know, you've always had people out there trying it with less talent. It's just that now it's flooded, and you have to compete with that. Back in the day, if you were good, you stood out amongst the bands in a club. You know, you, you worked hard on your sound and you could sound good and write good music. And there's still going to be a band who's just basically a joke that you're playing with. But, I mean, it's always been like that. But now everything's up front in your face because of the Internet. So that's the one that's the one downfall. But, you know, yeah, it's, it's yeah. easy it's to get out there now. So. I mean, well, there's a there's a flood, there's an overload of information, and that's one thing even with social marketing and media and stuff. I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff out there, and people are getting bombarded every day with it. So how do you stand out, you know, in the crowd in that regards? Um, and honestly, I mean, the talent in the area is is phenomenal. Uh -huh. Every time we turn around, we're inspired by other bands and other musicians, and I think that there's more talent um, today than there was or and i don't mean that there wasn't talent back then you know years ago but i just think there might be more bands i mean i think we have a yeah. really healthy music team. and there are people that are working their ass off and it shows i and, mean uh, that's it's pretty cool but when i was 15 i i can't play i couldn't play guitar or perform like these kids can today i mean it's so easy for them to learn you have youtube they could sit there and you know basically take guitar lessons from anyone over the internet all of these famous people now offer these type of services and 
you know, the, the learning is there. I mean, with computers, it's, it's so much easier. When, when I was a kid, you had to pay 15 bucks an hour and go sit in a room with some dude for, for, you know, 30 minutes to learn guitar and had one lesson a week. Now you could just sit home and fucking watch videos and tear that shit up. These, some of these kids are amazing. It's, it's, it's incredible. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it has its well, that's a whole pros other, and cons. I mean, that's a whole other can of worms for me, man. Personally, like, I love it. That I, I, I get the feeling that that in the next couple of years we're gonna see metal go the way of jazz. Um, it's an elevated art, like the same way that jazz requires practice and study to master. Uh, so does metal. Yeah, I, I agree. I won't be shocked. You're going to see, you know, you know, 40, 50 years ago, nobody would have thought to have jazz guitar instructors in universities. What the hell? It's jazz. Like 40, right. 50 years ago, it would have been unheard of. They're like, you go to you go to university to study classical. Well, I'm pretty sure that, you know, within our lifetimes, um, metal is going to have is going to develop an academic side because of exactly what you're saying, like. It's a style of music that, by all means, pushes the limits of your ability. Absolutely. I think that's why I'm drawn to it so much. I, I'm actually a metal and jazz hybrid player. If you have to be, if I have to keep it real with you, I, you know, I'm jazz trained, but I love metal equally. Right. And I can tell you that the, the, the headspace that my jazz teachers occupy is occupied by elite metal players too. I, I hear you. That I, I'm going to shut that. up and practice, you know, <laughs> see in a day or two, I'm going to go learn how to play, you know, and they're this master player and they, 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 they constantly laugh at how bad they think they are. And they're not like fishing for compliments. They really see this room for improvement. If you, you'll run into a lot of metal guys that are just, and hopefully, you know, myself included, I'm nowhere near satisfied with where I'm at as a, as a soloist and as a, even as a writer, you know, there's always room for improvement. And that mindset eventually becomes taken apart and studied by other well, people. Yeah, Justin, mm -hmm. I, I hear you. I mean, yeah. I, I've been playing a long time, uh, performing, writing, and I just actually started back up again, and I still learn every day. I mean, it's it's just how it is. I'll never... I'll, I don't. I can't play a solo to save my life. So I, I got way room for improvement on guitar. I mean, vocally, I think I got vocals now pretty good. But yeah. uh, I, I like to play a little everything. So that's why I never f fully learned um, or mastered basically one thing other than vocals is because I, I can't. I, I don't know. I just. I'm always moving on to something and that I think is one of my downfalls, but it also is a good thing because if I really want to write a song and record it, I can play every instrument. So, I mean, yeah, it man. just depends which way you want to look at it, but you'll master them all eventually. Right. Yeah. But I mean, what good at 80 will it do? <laughs> but <laughs> It'll be gratifying to me, I guess, but you'll be popular at the nursing home. <laughs> <laughs> there she uh, goes i told you she will say some crazy shit i love it i love it it's the truth though i'll be a wizard Wait, dad it'll be like eh, yeah you'll you have you'll get all the you get all the old all the groupies <laughs> all the yeah uh, and they're you know, they're experienced no oh dentures, my god. Buddy. yeah <laughs> a lot of gum oh god but you know what you're talking about what you guys are talking about it's really similar to our song blown away like Oscar could probably speak more to it because he's the lyricist behind that. But um, it's kind of that there's a what's the line in it where it talks about like practice. Oscar, just you talk about it because I'm going to screw it up. All right, but yeah, it's, along, okay. it's along those lines of like what, what this whole discussion is about right now. To truly reach for greatness requires sacrifice, um, energy it. and time. And that was definitely I don't know if you know this, Jay, but I, I teach guitar for a living. Yeah, no. and. And uh, I, that's something that I try to instill in, in my students of every level is if you want to if you want to to figure something out, if you want to if you want to excel at it, it's not going to it's not going to do it on its own. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Absolutely. I mean, you got it. You got to do it for yourself. I mean, 
I always, I just always found it hard because um, my the guitar teacher I had, I only took a few lessons, but I wanted to learn. Like if he would have just said to me, "What do, what do you want to learn? Give me a or something." He want he just wanted to to teach me what he liked, and I I didn't like that. So uh, I oh always, yeah, man. I wanted to learn how to play blues when I was a kid. Um, I wanted to play left-handed. I, I I can use both hands, and they forced me to play right-handed, and I really wasn't happy about that because that I think that's what kind of set me back from learning, and I didn't start really developing my skills until I was a teenager. So, and I started when I was like nine, maybe eight, and um, interesting. I just. I, I just felt like, man, this guy's such a dick. I want to hold the <laughs> I want to hold the guitar this way, and he won't let me hold it that way. And he kept saying, because the strings are the other way. I'm like, so let's put the strings the other way. I want to play. Are you left handed? I I'm right handed when I write, but I like shoot guns and play pool, and I can play baseball with both. Yeah, so. But I wanted to play guitar lefty. I don't. It, it just yeah. felt natural to me. Now I I play righty. So because that's I was forced to to play that way. And I'm left-handed, Jay, and I play righty. Do you? And so that's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting to hear. You know, like, and and I can totally get why people would want what people would want to flip it around because being a lefty that plays right-handed, there are there are strengths that. I have come natural to me in my left hand that are um, I just I just have to work less hard at doing some really cool stuff because huh. I'm left handed and I play right handed. Like think about like all your like all your hammer ons and pull offs and a lot of the legato style playing and stuff like that. Your dominant hands doing the nasty work. Yeah, you got you and got so <laughs> it's kind of a natural advantage. And so, I, you know, I think it's interesting you being a righty and wanting to flip it around. Maybe, uh, you know, a lot of second generation, this is funny because I have this conversation with some of my left-handed students, you know. I, I kind of ask them to please consider playing uh, right-handed. And they're like, why? And I said, second generation golfers and boxers, if they have a kid, you know, if, if a, if a pro, pro boxer or golfer has a kid that's left-handed, they'll have them uh, shoot right hand because they end up having a little more power in their drive. And, you know, a boxer especially, if you, if you train a southpaw to fight conventional stance, they're going to rely on their jab instead of brawl and live a lot longer. I, I think, yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, maybe, maybe it was a good thing because, I don't know, I just, I just wanted to play the blues. That's all I wanted to do. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh. I, I still think about I, I mean I'm I'm not a young guy anymore so I still think about going back and taking guitar lessons I just I, I feel weird man being my age and saying I'm going for a guitar lesson today I don't know if that sounds stupid no, what's no, your, it's never man. too late man what's your no. how old is your oldest student my oldest student the oldest student I had was like I had somebody who was like 48 years old for a while. Okay, that don't make me feel bad because that's older than me. <laughs> no, man. Honestly, dude, I you know I'm 38. I'll, I'll be 39 in, in July, and I'm probably gonna hunt down Bobby Coble in the next few months and take some lessons from him and, and learn learn some cool techniques. It, like it doesn't matter how what age you're at. You just find somebody that has something. Now the cool thing about being older and older older. Uh, what I like about older students is they have a way better idea of what they want. And I feel like I can give better instruction to somebody that says, okay, well, I want to know how to do this style. I want to do how to do this, you know? And even if I say, okay, in order to do that, you have to know how to do this. Right. But at least the dialogue gets started and you're always keeping it productive when you're, when you're doing that kind of thing. Yep. I I'd agree with that as well. It's funny because about 20 years after I took lessons from this guy, I, I remember him so well. 
I was somewhere in a store and he came walking in and I'm like, you are Joe, my old guitar teacher. <laughs> and I was like, you're such a dick. <laughs> you wouldn't let me play what I wanted <laughs> to play. And that's what you should let your students 